Hey guys, we're gonna make some Yoder Bay back ribs with some Uncle Steve's competition pig powder. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Todd. It's been a while since I've opened up that Yoder and cooked some ribs on it, and I can't wait to get started today on that cook. Folks, before we do, smash that subscribe button, tap that like button, a little shape like a hand like that, and be sure to hit me up in the comments and tell me what you think of this cook. So yeah, like I was saying, you know, it's been a while since I've unwrapped that Yoder, uncovered it, and dusted it off and use it. I need to use it a lot more, you know, being here in Southern California, I really have no excuse. So I'm gonna pull that thing out, fire it up, and get it heated up. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and season the ribs that I got. So I'm gonna do a really simple cook. You know, this is for a quick lunch for us. You know, actually, I'm, I'm gonna think it's probably gonna take four hours or so. What I'm going to use is some of this French's sweet buffalo mustard here as a schmear, and I'm, I'm just going to go on pretty generously, you know, make sure I get a nice even coating on there. And then, of course, I'm going to be using the good old tried and true Uncle Steve's mm. shake. I'm expecting success. You guys are going to come along with us. Of course, we've got two of them, which is great. Um, I'm going to do these exactly the same, guys. Um, since I am going in the Yoder, you know, I don't want to risk too much getting burned here. So there's a few pieces here, you know, that I'm just going to cut off and uh, toss out. A little bit of fat here, don't really want. So I'm just going to kind of trim that away. Again, yeah, not all of it, you know, just most of it. The stuff that's really not going to help that rub stick to. I'm not doing a backyard competition here, guys. Um, so I'm, you're not going to see me show you how to remove things like this membrane. Uh, I'm just going to leave it there, guys. I'm, I'm going to score it. Looks pretty good. Flip it over. Looks really nice. Now, again, guys, you know, I'm not gonna square these off. I'm not gonna trim them down. I'm not gonna take out um, extra little pieces of goodness here. I'm going for maximum yield. What I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna take off one of my gloves, make sure I have a nice clean hand. I'm gonna use this uh, sweet buffalo mustard here. Give you a good shot of that. Gonna be using this Uncle Steve's Shake competition pig powder. It's really good stuff, guys. I'm gonna drop a link down below. Make sure you go get you some. And uh, tell them Greenhorn sent you for special, special stuff. All right, guys, that's about all I'm gonna do to these ribs. So let's go out and see how the Yoder is doing. So the kind of wood I'm using today, guys, is almond. Now, almond's got a sweet, nutty flavor, so they tell me, because I've never used almond. I love almonds, but you know, the wood, you know, to this day, I haven't tried it yet. It's plentiful in California. We've got millions of almond orchards up north. And it's very similar to pecan, which I love. So. These I happen to pick up and they call this pizza oven size cuts. Now you could take a rip saw, cut them in half for the Yoder Wichita if you want, but I, I kind of like how they look because they're not that thick. So, you know, I'm going to kind of make a little bit of a stack triangle or something and, and, you know, work it out. Then once I got a nice bed established, I threw these on top until there's nice yellow flame and the smoke is not as strong right now. It's still kind of smoky and I'm gonna wait until that smoke kind of turns blue and then I'm gonna throw them ribs on. All right guys, here's the Yoder. As you can see, still kind of smoky, okay? So uh, I want that smoke to come down a little bit, you know, not too smoky. And also, you know, that temperature, wanna get that temperature a little bit higher than that. Uh, so on this Yoder with the uh, thermometers where they're at, 
I got one there by the exhaust, and then I got one down low near the firebox. Now this is how the loaded Wichita comes, and I'd prefer to get a thermometer here. You know, probably don't need one way up here. In fact, you know, I've always thought about moving that one all the way over here. Um, but you know, I got the fireboard today, and what I'm going to do with this bad boy is uh, I'm only using it for ambient temperature. So I got the little ambient probe set up over here and I got a water box water tray over here and uh, there's a tuning plate under here with holes in it they progressively get larger so the smoke tends to kind of come up so I want to close that down make sure it continues to uh, come up on temperature a little bit so there's my pecan and uh, let me show you kind of how I'm doing that here Whew, it is getting hot okay so there's the pecan now you see how I did it got the coals down there and I just Kind of did a little bit of a triangle with one piece over there, and um, so far it's doing pretty good. Um, I can't really do a perfect square stack like I like I do with, you know, some of these other pieces like these hickory chunks I have here. So what I'm going to do with this is just kind of make a triangle and just see what I can do with about. Now I usually on the Wichita keep the door wide open. I, I like to think this vent is useless, and um, I think it's burning really good. So I'm going to drop the door and maybe kick that door open just a little bit more to try to see if I can get these temperatures raised up and I think they are you know it's still smoking pretty dirty here so you know it's gonna be kind of a waiting game and I'm just gonna have to wait until that's nice and blue and then grab those ribs bone side down chunky bony side toward the fire and I'm gonna orient to the left by the stack. So today I'm going by texture cooking. I'm not going by temperature, guys. I'm gonna wait at least two hours after I do put them on there to wait for that bark to set up. I'm gonna check them then. And if they start to be somewhat firm, but still squishy, pliable, then I'm gonna wrap them. I'm gonna wrap them in foil. I'm gonna use just a little bit of butter, maybe a little bit more Uncle Steve's shake, but not much else. I know these things are gonna be juicy. All right, guys, there they are. Uh, I think uh, it's set up pretty good. I think we got some uh, good uh, measure of smoke and heat. Uh, I'm going to be targeting about 225 to 250. And uh, again, going for about two hours. And uh, we'll see you then. All right, guys, I wanted to tell you about a barbecue competition that I've been asked to join. And I gladly accept it. It's called the Barbecue Pitmasters of YouTube competition. Smoking Joe's from Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue is gracious mm. enough to host this on his channel. So I'm gonna leave a link down in his community tab in the description of this video. And what it is, is not only a competition for a bunch of YouTubers that have cooking channels, but you guys are gonna vote on every single video, hoping that you're gonna vote on mine and you have a chance to win a lot of cool things. Probably the best thing I could think of is a Yoder YS 640 pellet smoker. That is a primo primo prize. So you guys, for that reason right there, you guys need to follow this space. Be sure that on the 24th of March, I think it's the 24th of March, be looking for the announcement of my video that's gonna drop. And uh, of course, for any updates, uh, watch this space. Also check us out on YouTube on Greenhorn Barbecue Beer Discussions for updates and what I'm going to cook, whose team I'm on. It's going to be really fun, guys. All right, guys, it's basically been about two hours. The bark is set up. Um, I kind of like the color, although I like it a little bit darker. But since the bark is set up, I'm going to go ahead and start spritzing now. Now, the key to getting that nice smoky flavor and getting that uh, smoke and bark to set up is keep the moisture up. And that's why you spritz. Not only to protect the meat, but just make sure that that, smark, that smoke actually has something to stick to. Okay, temperature looks okay. Let's uh, open it up. Okay, looking good. So I'm using a water apple cider vinegar mix. And I'm just going to... You know, I'm using a food grade uh, bottle. Nothing's ever been in it. I'm just going to give it a nice little coating. Looks good. Okay. Now, I like the color. It's got a nice mahogany color. 
that almond smoke really smells so good and as you can see it's hard to see right now but it's a nice blue smoke as you can see that smoke is looking really good you know now we're two hours in basically and uh, you know i'm going to go about another hour on these ribs and then i'm going to start feeling you know i want some droop in that rib you know when i hold it up from the middle don't want it to completely sag then it's you know it's obviously too well done i just want some good droop a lot more than when it's uh raw but not so much when it's done it takes time to get that feel maybe a little bit of springiness but uh definitely i'm looking for some much darker color on those ribs then i'm going to wrap them all right guys it's been a couple more hours and i think they're ready to wrap but let's check them out all right guys so i really like the color let's see here okay now see how that is it's bending but not so much to where it's cracking open it's firm it's got a little spring to it and i think these are just right so let's get them over to the foil all right guys first thing i'm going to do is lay a bed of butter now, i don't have the uh, squeeze spread butter which works great so i'm just going to use a few pats of butter and uh, you know i'm going to go lengthwise here so i'm just going to put them down like this side by side next thing i'm going to use some aunt jemima probably haven't seen her face around yeah we're keeping it real here at greenhorn okay i'm gonna just put a little bit here all right and for a special surprise i'm gonna be using this sweet desert shake from uncle steve's you can bake with this you can make anything sweet with this and i'm gonna lay some down here because it's got a lot of sugar in it there we go now I'm just gonna lay this in there. All right guys, so right back on the smoker. Now it's the time you can go right back to some of the wood that you have sitting around. You can use any kind of wood you want at this point. Hell, you guys could put it in the oven if you want, but. I already got the yoder fired up, so might as well keep it huffing. In about 45 minutes, I think it's going to be just fine. So I'm going to unwrap them, and then I'm going to paint them with some Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce, and I'm going to put them back on the grill for probably a half hour or so, just to let that uh, meat tighten back up and let that barbecue kind of act as a glaze, and then we're going to eat them. Okay, here we go. Nice dark mahogany color, guys. What do you think? All right, not bad. You know, I wasn't going for a colorful rib, but that's okay. All right, so typically, guys, I know some people turn these upside down to cut them, but I can identify the ribs right here. And uh, I think I'm just gonna go for the middle here and show you guys. Ooh, that is falling apart. Opportunity for me to eat. Hey, right, don't tell me you never do that. Okay. There we go. Mm. Nice. I don't mind a rib that falls apart, guys. Not bad, not bad. Now again, I didn't really do any shaping or extra trimming on these. All right, guys, I'm gonna eat this one right here. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. A lot of people judge ribs by the shiny bone left over. I'd say it's uh, qualified. Oh my God, pulls apart just so well. I'd say officially, it was a six hour cook. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by watching another episode of Greenhorn Barbecue Beer. Hey, if you guys don't mind before you leave, hit that subscribe button, smash that thumbs up, and comment down below what you think about these ribs. 
goods, bads, and others, I don't care, guys. Lay it on the line, tell me what you think and how you would do them. And don't forget, be watching this space and a Facebook page for information on the upcoming Barbecue Pitmasters U2 competition. We're in it, and you have a chance to win a lot of cool prizes, including a Yoder YS640 smoker. We'll see you.